Just a, a, a brief overview of uh, analog devices for those people who aren't familiar with us. Um, we were founded in 1965. We have uh, 15,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we make uh, 45,000 different products. So everything from power to ADCs to DAX. So we're you know a big chip company. Um, and so we don't classify ourselves as a chip company anymore. We actually classify ourselves as a solutions company. We make solutions for customers' very hard problems. And that a lot of the times includes chips and software and systems and these kinds of things. And that's kind of what I'll be talking about today. Um, you know, our customers gain value through the performance technology expertise that we have. So it's from the, uh, the core products that we have. Um, through various acquisitions from uh, Linear Technologies, Hittite, Innovasic, uh, Cyprus, uh, Vescent, um, to you know, getting up to this systems pieces. Uh, we work in a lot of different um, industries, from aerospace defense, automotive, communications, consumer, energy, healthcare, industrial automation, industrial sensing, instrumentation, Internet of Things, uh, RFMG, and power. And uh, SDR and um, RF transceivers is almost used in every single one of these applications or our market segments. Uh, so it's, it's a very important thing to us. When we look at um, things that we're trying to do as we try and help customers solve their problems, it, you know, it does start in this research piece. It does you know, go to, they go through a stage or what, what we call internally a journey, going from you know, um, research to evaluation to design to production. And we wanna make sure that we provide the tools that uh, can support people as they go along through that and that also includes GNU Radio and MATLAB and you know, evaluation software and these kinds of things, um, as well as supporting other ecosystems and frameworks uh, like Michael just talked about with the IAO pieces. The other thing that we do is we work a lot with uh, education. Um, you know, our uh, founders came, uh, as most double E's do, from, uh, you know, um, they graduated from MIT and they have strong ties with MIT. Uh, still to this day, we do a lot of stuff both on uh, the SDR piece with the Pluto and on the analog l learning circuits with the M2K and the M1K and the parts kit. Um, but it's not just about kits and things, it's also about uh, textbooks and labs. So this was a textbook that um, myself and uh, Travis Collins, who's uh, back over there, um, were part authors on, which is a software-defined radio for engineers. It's available for free on the Analog Devices website. Um, most of the examples in the book are um, MATLAB based because when we went out and talked to uh, academia, what, that's basically what they said they were looking for because of ease of installation. Everybody wants Windows. And I think that'll be part of a, uh, a lightning talk that Travis will give later um, this week too. But uh, one thing is like we are growing, we are hiring. If, uh, you're, if you're a student here and interested, uh, you can go to careers.analog.com and we have lots of open positions. This was uh, as of last week. Um, and if you're an experienced person and want to come work on chips before they um, are available to our largest customers, so typically we get to do things and play with things a year ahead of when it actually gets, or two years ahead of when it gets actually released to the market. So the devices that we're working on in the lab now, um, nobody has seen yet except ADI people. And it's actually pretty exciting to work on some of these uh, new things. Um, in terms of uh, you know, chips to software to HDL to systems, when we look at um, software-defined radio, we see software-defined radio going, going into many, many different markets. Whether that's radar or first responder radios, to traditional comms, to instrumentation, to cellular testers, to even robots, um, this is these markets don't have a lot of expertise in SDRs. So they come to us and say, "How do I actually make a data link, or how do I, you know, get video transmitting across, or how do I do X, Y, Z?" And so we try and do that. So our challenge is to go from these devices to products. And uh, there's a big difference if you're not an SDR person or not a comms person to do this. So there's these, um, you know, pressure that everybody in the industry has from cost to development time to performance to power to flexibility to higher integration to scalability. How does that all work? And like I think uh, Martin said, I think this is a, a concept I uh, borrowed from um, uh, Matt Edis' presentation a few years ago, where uh, you know. 
SDR is this kind of combination of RF design, SOC assembly, digital hardware, algorithmic pieces, software engineering, and SDR kind of fits in the middle of all those things together. And like Martin mentioned, not from an academia perspective, it's, uh, it's, it's not taught together. People have to pick it up on their own or these kinds of things. And so if you are a RF digital person um, and you want to develop a product, you know, you end up with a system that kind of looks like this. And uh, which is uh, problematic to debug and develop with and these kinds of things. Which is why we, you know, a few years ago introduced our Radioverse pieces. And what the Radioverse is, is uh, not only market leading radio technologies, but a design environment. Which would include things like the new radio and access to expertise. So that would be um, from the research piece, you know, uh, education, selection tools, behavioral models that run purely in simulation that you can do uh, simulation with all your channels on. Uh, look at make versus buy. Do I make a SOM? Do I buy a SOM? Do I make my own custom hardware? Um, what partner hardware is available? Uh, going from evaluation, uh, you know, common evaluation hardware, software, evaluation platforms, development systems, uh, you know, doing things with I.O. like Michael talked about, or C, C++, Python, uh, getting into your detailed design stages in either, uh, you know, the Xilinx tools or MathWorks tools or, you know, continuing to use GNU Radio, uh, forums and wikis and interfacing with uh, developers. So um, on the software side, on the HDL side, the people answering the questions on the uh, forums that we have are the developers who develop the code. We don't have like a separate applications team or anything like that. So if you, ask, if you think you found a bug in the DMA engine, you can talk to the guy who wrote the DMA engine, which is uh, you know, pretty uh, good from a technical depth perspective. And as well from a production standpoint, we also publish like the test procedures for all our ADI platforms. So if you want to see how we test Plutos and what the test fixtures look like and those kinds of things, uh, what specs we do, you can actually go to our GitHub and find those pieces and use them in your product. Um, so, you know, as these developers move, their hardware and software requirements move as well. So when people go into that first kind of research stage, they're, uh, they're looking for, you know, behavioral models or streaming, and uh, that's a, a great solution for um, the Pluto, because you can look at things, you can stream things to GNU Radio or stream things to MATLAB, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, you go into this algorithm development piece, and you're still maybe streaming into GNU Radio or Python, and, and the Pluto is, is still a good uh, solution for that. You've got your host libraries, your GUI software, your um, integration with GNU Radio, it's no problem. But then, um, if you want to go to the next step, like where do you go? And sometimes this is the end step. If, you're, if your goal is to um, work on an algorithm, publish a paper, this is all you need, and that's great. But there's a lot of people who want to go to the next step of like, okay, well, I need to go to this next stage of de design elaboration. I need to take my floating point things and kind of make a, a fixed point model so I can try and eventually get into my FPGA. And that's when, you know, you use uh, GNU Radio, uh, C++ modeling, Simulink modeling, hardware streaming, data type conversion, and you maybe use a different hardware platform because you want to start looking at how this connects to other things. And you could either use one of like ADI's RF SOMs, um, uh, FPGA board. This is a, a Z board, but an FM comms 2, I think. And this is an Altera board and a R radio board. And you know, this also comes with all the HDL, all the schematics, all the Gerbers, all the device drivers. All the things that go into this are uh, freely available. And then if you, you, you kind of get that run, running, you say, okay, well, now the next stage is the prototype. And it's like, okay, well, we can look at a pack RF or RF SOM plus the carrier, which is what this, uh, this blue box is, the pack RF. And this gives you like, you know, batteries and peripheral access and these kinds of things to maybe do your field trials, your bake off, or, you know, win your contract, that kind of an idea before you go to production where you deploy to custom hardware and actually ship your end product. And what we find is that as people kind of get down to this stage, they may use Linux and I.O. and these kinds of things during their development process because it's a very feature-rich, uh, easy-to-use, easy-to-debug platform. 
And then when they get to this last stage, they need to optimize for cost or optimize for power. They'll take all those things, they'll throw it away, and then just use kind of our bare metal, no OS, while one loop kind of environments because they want to shrink things down to the least memory footprint possible or the least overhead or that kind of an idea. But from an algorithmic standpoint, from an HDL or software piece, they can still use all the same things because all of these things down to this, even this stage, support IIO and these uh, industry standard frameworks. So we have uh, uh, a few different um, evaluation platforms from our FMC cards up at the top here to the, uh, the SOM and the PACRF to a uh, reference design. So this is a 250 milliwatt DPD solution um, to our next generation um, 9009 system on module. So uh, this one is based on the RF transceiver we just launched uh, this year. So this is uh, two receivers, two transmitters, 200 megahertz of bandwidth. Uh, the, the, the SOM here actually has two devices on it. So it's a four in, four out, phase coherent, phase synchronized device. And where you can actually synchronize multiple SOMs together. So uh, when we go out and talk to a lot of our customers, they're like, one device, I don't care. I want to be, show me how these things scale up to a thousand different uh, synchronized channels. And those are the problems that we're trying to solve. By, you know, doing and understanding systems like this. Uh, one of the other platforms that we're just in the process of releasing, we're releasing is the FMCOMS 11. So this is a direct RF, um, kind of like DPD solution. So we have um, a two and a half giga sample ADC and a 10 giga sample DAC on an FMC card that you can plug into a Xilinx platform and actually uh, get, get going. And it comes, again, supported by IIO and Linux drivers and you can stream the data right into GNU Radio and get going. Um, whether GNU Radio can keep up with uh, two and a half giga samples a second is, uh, is definitely an interesting challenge. But when we do things, we kind of look at, we do things up at the top layers. So we look at Pluto or the FMCOMS2 or the FMCOMS5 or, you know, some of these other platforms. And, uh, you know, projects are not bespoke. They're not custom. They're all based on standard infrastructure. So whether it's FMC or the Linux kernel or U-Boot or some base HDL, when our customers use various pieces from these, and uh, we look at resources across different markets uh, where we have our, our comms or mill aerospace or wireless video or SDR or IoT, where ADI has our solutions. We work with a lot of different companies, including people like Edis, including people like Epic, uh, where they will actually be making a variety of different hardware that also addresses those markets. And this is, you know, from uh, Aero to uh, Nano. So Nano Semi is a, um, an algorithm company that we work with. Uh, they do uh, very wideband digital pre-distortion. Uh, Benetel is a design company. Uh, so so uh, two good examples of that are um, Epic's uh, Sidekick X4 and Sidekick Z2. So the Sidekick Z2 like this was the little platform Michael was describing. It has a EDI radio, a Xilinx Zinc on it, some DRAM. This is um, architecturally similar to Pluto. And it's so architecturally similar that we can take our firmware images like Michael was saying and run it on the device so that you can get GNU radio and MATLAB or C or Python or kind of go from there. So if you've used Pluto and you're like, okay, well I, I need something that has better RF sensitivity because it, I need RF filters or the LNA on it and you want to grow up to a industrial temp range device and these kinds of things that the Pluto is not, this is an excellent solution. And the software investment you make in one device just moves to the next device. And you could move from this to the E310 just like um, Michael was describing because we also support that from an IIO perspective. And then there's the Sidekick X4 which uh, um, has two, 90, two 9009s and an FMC card. And in this solution, I think that uh, Epic used the uh, analog devices, JSD core, and some of the device drivers. So we also make our own JESD 204B core, which is open source or under a commercial license. And uh, Epic used that in this system to get up and going. 
So you know, it's, it's the solution of you know, devices, HDL, software drivers, libraries, simulation, tool integration, schematics, Gerber's, system on modules, as well as various par partners to get the products uh, faster. So I'd like to you know, say thanks. If you want to uh, reach out from um, an ADI perspective, we are um, involved in a lot of social media. The two workshops that Michael was talking about, uh, there's one uh, tomorrow, I think this one is full. Um, this one still had some spots in it last time I checked. If you're interested in attending this one, we are gonna be doing some hands-on things. There is some prerequisite software to install on your machine. Um, if you have problems installing that, come by and just talk to us in the, uh, the ADI booth and we can try and help you out during the demo section. Yep, uh, that's it. All right, any questions yeah. for Robin? Nope, okay, thank you very much, yep. Robin. Oh, what's up? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, so, ADI sponsored free Pluto SDRs for, I think all of the students that registered, right? Every, yeah, every single student that is here at the conference got a free Pluto SDR yep. from ADI, so thank you very much. Yeah, no, no yeah. problem. Yeah. As well as pe people attending the workshop here will get a, uh, a Pluto as well. Though you'll walk away with the Pluto and uh, all the software on your laptop if, the, if it's working. So, awesome! Thank you very much. Yeah.